Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to be sharing my top 3D printing tips to help you improve the quality and the detail of your models. Getting started with 3D printing is easy. In fact, I am thoroughly convinced that you could go out tomorrow and buy a 3D printer if you haven't already and start creating basic models with some success within a matter of days. And in fact, if you'd like to give that a try, I have a video that walks you through the design of a basic wagon body, which is what I recommend starting with, by the way, and you can check that video out there. So getting started with 3D printing is quite easy. What really takes the time and effort to learn is to raise the bar, to start improving the complexity and the detail and the quality of the models that you create. And this is what I have spent the last couple of years really trying to master. And I think the results I've been getting have been really quite impressive now, and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Now, the tips I'm gonna give you concern FDM 3D printing. That is melting a strip of plastic and layering it up to create a model. Obviously, FDM does not produce the highest quality models from a detail perspective, but it is my preferred way of going about things because it is cheaper, it is simpler, there's less equipment required, and it's cleaner and doesn't produce gases that would gas me out of this room. Obviously, some of my tips here might help you improve your resin printed models, but for the most part, probably not. So I'm gonna give you tips on three specific areas today. First of all, model design, so that's the CAD area. A lot of what you do at this step will directly affect the quality of your prints. Second of all, the slicer settings. A slicer is a software that converts the 3D model that you have designed into a file that your 3D printer can then take and turn into a physical object. So that's the second area. And the third area concerns the hardware. What you can do to actually get your physical 3D printer to perform at its best and print reliably. So let's get started. We're gonna start with some CAD tips. And the first one is this. Keep the nozzle width in mind while you design, especially for small parts. Right, so what on earth does that mean? Well, your 3D printer works by layering tubes of plastic on top of one another to build up the model. These tubes are 0.4 millimeters wide, and by keeping this in mind when you design a model, you can improve the quality and you can get a better idea of what your 3D printer is capable of. For thin parts, make sure that their width is a multiple of 0.4 millimeters for best results. Here are two walls in SketchUp. The one on the left is 1.2 millimeters thick, and that's a multiple of 0.4. The wall on the right is 1.4 millimeters thick, and of course that's not a multiple of 0.4. In the slicing software, the 1.2 millimeter wall consists of three equal size tubes, which are 0.4 millimeters wide. That's great. The 1.4 millimeter thick wall consists of two outer tubes and an extra fat tube in the middle where extra material is being squeezed out of the nozzle. Now this is actually something new to me because the previous version of Cura would not make that extra fat sausage in the middle of the wall. The old Cura would leave a gap which would really reduce the integrity of the part. Now, Cura seems to be able to produce extra thick or extra thin lines, not just 0.4 millimeter ones. But if you want maximum precision, then stick to 0.4. This is particularly important for small detail parts. Here's an example. This is some of the pipe work from my Great Eastern 552 loco, and I've designed it so that this part can be printed with one pass of the nozzle without too much complexity. So if you keep that 0.4 millimeter nozzle in mind while you design your parts, you can really help to optimize them. Here's another example. This is the axle box of one of my 3D printed wagons. And these vertical supports are absolutely tiny, but by making them 1.6 millimeter wide, 1.6 obviously being a multiple of 0.4, the supports can be exactly four lines of filament thick which I know from experimentation will create a part that is strong enough. If I'd have just made those parts look right, I might have had a very thin piece there that wouldn't be strong. So again, keep that nozzle width in mind. 
Also, I would recommend not making anything thinner than 0.4 millimeters. If you do, it may not print right or it may not print at all. With the old Cura, if anything was less than 0.4 millimeters thick, it just wouldn't print. Now the latest Cura is doing a better job with that, but I don't know what the quality of these parts would be like. So that's my tip. Tip number two is to think about the layer height while you're designing your models. The layer height is the thickness of each layer on your 3D printed model. Using a larger layer height will reduce the number of layers required to complete the model, which will reduce the time required to complete the model, but it would also reduce the level of detail. If you use a smaller layer height, then more layers will be required to complete the model, which will take longer, but it will also give you a better vertical resolution. By thinking about what each layer of your model contains, you can really get the most out of an FDM 3D printer. For instance, this model here has rivets, very, very tiny rivets on the side. People said you couldn't get rivets with FDM, but of course you can. And I achieved this by placing these half cylinders onto my design. This model is designed to print at a layer height of 0.18 millimeters, and these rivets are exactly 0.18 millimeters tall, so they only occupy one single layer. And if we view this in the slicing software, you can see that on these layers, the nozzle just swings outwards slightly, which creates the rivet. Provided you don't mind the extra print time, you can get even better rivets by using a smaller layer height. This model is designed to print at a layer height of 0.08 millimeters, which is what I would recommend for the highest quality results. And as you can see, the rivets on here look even better. If we look at this in CAD, you can see that the rivet height is 0.4 millimeters tall this time, which means that each rivet occupies five layers on the model. By making these rivets dome shaped, I'm varying the amount that the nozzle swings out on each layer, which produces a more rounded looking rivet. At one point, every single thing I designed, I made sure took up a specific number of layers. But in reality, with larger objects like a wagon body, this is not too important because your slicer software will just sort all of that out for you. But with much smaller parts like this detail from my 552, it's still very useful to do this. Each vertical section of this little valve occupies a specific number of layers, which ensures that the height I've designed in CAD will match the height of the part that is created, including this peg, which is designed to fit into a very specifically sized hole. So I wanted that peg to be as precise as possible, and so by keeping the layer height in mind as I designed it, I was able to ensure that, and as you've seen on my 552, all of the parts fitted together very nicely. Let's move on then and talk about slicer settings. Now remember your slicer is a computer software that converts the models you've designed into files that your 3D printer can use to create the physical model. I'm using Cura as my slicer. There are lots of slicing softwares available, but Cura is free and it gives you maximum control. Now the good news is that most slicers have a load of default presets that you can just select, slice your file, put it onto the 3D printer and you're done. But if you want to, you can take a lot of that control on board yourself and tweak things. And that's what I'm gonna talk about now. So first of all, initial layer height. Are you having trouble printing small parts with small layer heights? Are they not sticking to the build plate properly? If that's the case, try doubling your initial layer height so that the first layer is a little bit thicker, which will help it to stick to the build plate. So when I'm printing small parts with a layer height of 0.08 millimeters, I set that initial layer to 0.16 millimeters, which effectively makes that first layer occupy two layers really, and that just sticks better to the build plate. Temperature. The PLA Plus that I use to create my models is rated for 210 degrees, but when printing at a fine layer height, I often find that this is too much and I get loads of stringing. By turning the temperature down on these parts to about 180 degrees, which seems quite radical, doesn't it? The stringing completely disappears. And again, the smaller the parts you're creating, the better an improvement this will produce. Print speed. Manufacturers of 3D printers don't know what you're going to do with that machine. They don't know whether you're gonna create massive vases or tiny little models. And therefore their preset default slicer settings may not be optimized for your tiny little models. 
So by setting the print speed to something small, like 20 to 25 millimeters per second, you can make your printer really slow down and take its time, and this makes a massive difference in the print quality. Also, always enable acceleration and jerk controls. I set the acceleration to 700 and the jerk 7. This stops your extruder and your moving print bed from making any sudden moves and accelerations, which can create imperfections or ghosting on your models. This is a very simple setting, you just enable it and then forget about it, and your print quality will forever be improved. Print with a skirt. For basically everything I create, I enable the skirt option. And the skirt makes your 3D printer create a few lines around the model before it starts printing it, and this gets the plastic flowing before the extruder starts working on your model itself, and this makes sure that the first layer is absolutely perfect. If you're making really tiny parts, never just make one at a time. Produce them in batches, even if you don't need more than one. This is a buffer that was created as part of a batch of 40, and as you can see, it is absolutely perfect. Now I'm going to show you what would happen if I created just one buffer on its own. Let's roll a time lapse. And here is the result. As you can see, this buffer is a melty mess and I don't think it would fit into one of my chassis. If you create batches of objects rather than just single objects, your extruder will move between them on each layer which will allow them to cool, rather than just constantly work on the same one and the part will never cool and never look right. So that is a very important tip. For small parts, create batches, don't just do them one at a time. There are tons and tons and tons of slicer settings, so just don't be afraid to experiment. And if you've got a problem, if something's not working as you want it to, just Google it. Chances are somebody else will have had that same problem and there might be a simple fix for it, just something you can tweak in the slicer settings. Don't be afraid to experiment. Let's move on then and talk about some tips for your 3D printers themselves. The first tip is to tune your initial Z height. So the initial Z height is basically the starting height of your extruder on the first layer. And most 3D printers give you quite some control over this. If you print too close to the bed, you'll never get them off the bed without destroying them. And if you print too far away from the bed, things won't stick and your parts won't work. So I recommend experimenting to find that sweet spot. Also, take some time to make sure your 3D printer is correctly leveled. This can save you a lot of time. The best machines for tuning your Z height are the Mingda ones, as you can literally adjust these on the fly. If you print with a skirt, you can adjust that Z height while the skirt is printing, and then by the time the machine gets to your part, hopefully it will be set perfectly. You should also adapt your initial layer height depending on the part you're creating. If you're creating something huge with a really large surface area on the bottom, then raise the initial layer height because if you print too close to the bed, you'll never get that off. Similarly, if it's something really small, just like a little pipe or something like that, dial it down a little bit so that you're printing closer to the bed and you're more likely to get a good adhesion. There's a lot of information online with regards to improving your print quality and slicer settings and all of this and that, but there's not that much on 3D printer maintenance. So now I'm going to give you a few tips on maintaining your 3D printers to get the best possible results and hopefully to extend their working lifetime as well. First of all, tension your belts and keep them nice and tight. I would always recommend buying a 3D printer that makes this easy. If a 3D printer that you're looking at buying doesn't have these little twisty things, then I would not recommend buying it. Keeping those belts decently tight will reduce ghosting and improve the quality of your prints. Next up, clean and lubricate your machines. I do this after every 50 hours of operation, roughly. Now this is my process. I wipe down all of the moving parts, so the tracks, the little guide wheels, and I also clean out the lead screws with a toothbrush, just to make sure all of that dust and gunk is gone. I then add a small amount of light machine oil to all of these moving parts, being careful to keep it away from the belts. 
A clean and well lubricated machine will be able to move more smoothly and effortlessly, which is really important in creating good quality prints. And it should last a little bit longer too, which is exactly what you want. My final tip is to maintain your build plate surface. Again, I do this after every 50 hours of operation, roughly. I start by scrubbing the surface clean. This is for glass print beds, as some people recommend not to wet powder coated surfaces, but I prefer glass anyway. Do this with detergent and hot water and get any of the dirt off there. Then apply a firm and even layer of glue stick glue to the surface and heat the bed to 50 degrees for about 30 minutes to bake it on. Then, between prints, pour about a capful of IPA or isopropyl alcohol onto the bed and just gently scrub the whole thing with a toothbrush. This will dissolve and redistribute the glue around the build plate, which can make it last for 10 prints or more. Really, really handy tip. Anyway, that is basically all I have for you for the time being. What are you struggling with with 3D printing? Have you got any questions? Is there anything you'd like help with? Please do comment down below if so, and I might make another video like this to try and help you out. I'm really passionate about 3D printing, and if you think it's something you would enjoy, please give it a try, because it might just be the future of our hobby. Anyway, for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers, folks. You take care.